Hi and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at the reactions that Halliwell Keynes can undergo. If you've not already watched it, you should go and have a look at the video looking at the synthesis of Halliwell Keynes first. Halliwell Keynes are useful synthetically as they allow you to produce lots of different molecules. The reason that you can carry out a nucleophilic substitution on a Halliwell Keynes is because of the CX bond. This bond is slightly polar as the electrons are pulled slightly more towards the halogen. This leaves your carbon as an electrophile, which can be attacked by a nucleophile. We're going to focus on three different reactions today. If you wish to produce an alcohol from a haloalkane, then you should react it with either sodium or potassium hydroxide in water. This will allow you to replace your halogen with the OH, which is the nucleophile. If you wish to produce a nitrile or to take it further towards a carboxylic acid, then you should use sodium cyanide in ethanol. The CN here is your nucleophile and you will replace the X with a C triple bond N. This is an excellent way to increase the length of the chain by one. If you wish, you can then use acid hydrolysis to turn this into a carboxylic acid. And then the final reaction we have is where you would take an alcohol and react it with a, rea a reactive metal such as potassium to produce what we call a metal alkoxide and you have to do this in alcohol and this allows you to produce a new family called an ether. Your nucleophile is the OR- minus here and that will replace the X. There are two mechanisms for nucleophilic substitution of haloalkanes. They are SM1 and SM2. The S stands for substitution, the N stands for nucleophilic, and the 1 means that we have first order kinetics. That means there is only one molecule involved in the slowest step. That molecule is a tertiary haloalkane for reasons that we'll go into in a moment. The slowest step is where the X is removed as a halide ion leaving behind a carbocation. This bond here is polar and allows this uh, ion to come off. You're then left with a carbocation that can be attacked from it by a nucleophile from either side. The reason that the SM1 mechanism only happens for tertiary haloalkanes is that there is no space for a nucleophile to attack the carbon centre here. That's due to what we call steric hindrance around this carbon centre. Once the X does come off and leave behind a carbocation, we have a tertiary carbocation. This is slightly stabilised by the inductive effect from the three carbon groups which are attached here. They can donate a little bit of electron density into the carbon at the centre, allowing this positive charge to be stabilised. This means that this is the most stable route for the tertiary haloalkanes to react from. Because we form this trigonal planar carbocation, you can have your nucleophile attack from either side of this carbon. This means that if you have three different groups attached here with a fourth group attacking, you will get a racemic mixture of your two enantiomers forming. The second mechanism is the SN2 mechanism. In SN2 we have substitution, nucleophilic, but the 2 means that we have second order kinetics. This means we have two molecules involved in the slowest step, the two molecules being your haloalkane and the nucleophile. This tends to occur for primary or sometimes secondary haloalkanes.
and this happens where we have the nuclear file attack from behind. This pushes out the halide ion to form a five-membered transition state. So in this transition state, the halide has not quite left and the nuclear file is not yet fully attached. Once the halide leaves, then we have an inversion of chirality. If there is any, and we have the nuclear file attached, attached. Primary haloalkanes undergo the SN2 mechanism as there is less steric hindrance around about the electrophilic carbon where the nucleophile attacks. And also if this were to have the X come off as a halide ion, there is little there to stabilise the carbocation that would form. A third mechanism that haloalkanes can undergo is elimination. The elimination reaction is the exact opposite of an addition reaction and this is where we eliminate two of the atoms from the haloalkane to produce a carbon-carbon double bond. To perform an elimination reaction you need to use KOH in ethanol. We show an example here. So the OH- from the KOH can take off this H here. The electrons then transfer in towards the carbon and then push out the bromide ion. Leaving us with H2O and KBr. For each of these reactions, decide which mechanism will take place and show the curly arrow mechanism for it. Pause the video now and try these examples. In this first reaction, we have a haloalkane and sodium hydroxide in water, which is going to proceed via a nucleophilic substitution reaction, where we substitute the Cl for the OH. So our final product will be propanol. To show the mechanism, we have our carbon with the chlorine attached, and then we have C2H5, and then two hydrogen atoms here. As this is a primary haloalkane, the chances are this will go by an SN2 reaction. So you'll have your nucleophile attack the carbon center here, pushing out the chloride ion. This will produce the five-membered transition state, where both things are still attached. before finally the chloride ion uh, leaves and the OH- minus is attached fully. In this second example we have bromopropane here and it's being reacted with sodium hydroxide but this time in ethanol. This means that we should end up with propene as our final product. So if we draw this out using full structural formula, so we can see what is happening. So the OH- minus will take a hydrogen adjacent to the carbon where the bromine is. The electrons will go in to form the double bond and then the bromine will fall off there. And in our final example, we have this haloalkane here reacting with sodium cyanide and that is going to replace your Cl with the Cn.
which then could react further to produce a carboxylic acid. So for this one here, we have a, a tertiary haloalkane, which means that the CN- minus cannot attack this carbon because there's too much steric hindrance around it. So our first step will be for the chloride ion to leave. And this will leave us with this carbocation, which can then be attacked by the CN minus. The minus is on the carbon atom. Which could then further react to form a carboxylic acid. Thank you for watching my video on haloalkanes. I hope that you found it helpful. Please remember to subscribe and follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Ken for regular updates on new videos. Bye.